When it comes to the pure amount of content, the Super Smash Bros. sequels are notorious for outdoing every Smash game that came before them. With each new installment, we've received more characters, stages, items, game modes, music, and collectibles than we ever have before. But Sakurai doesn't just stop there. He says, so what if you learned all the moves and button inputs? So what if you understand the fundamentals and know how to execute special moves, smash attacks, aerials, and normals? Oh, you think we're done? BAM! Super Smash Bros. Melee comes out and now you can charge your smash attacks, air dodge in any direction, wave dash, wall jump, wall tech, and perfect shield. You thought that was crazy? How about every single character gets a brand new move via side special? And that's not even the most innovative addition to the game. When we made the jump from Smash 64 to Melee, Sakurai blessed us with up and down throws, which led to chain grabs. It truly is a beautiful thing. But then Super Smash Bros. Brawl came around and I'm sure everyone was thinking that Sakurai and his crew were all out of ideas. They already added a new special move input, new throw directions, charged smash attacks, and more. They couldn't possibly get any more creative. Or could they? <laughs> Just when the whole world thought we couldn't get anything else to make the core Smash gameplay even better, we get final smashes. The supers and ultras of the Smash Brothers franchise. Yeah, sure, they're banned in competitive play and they weren't balanced very well, but when it comes to just playing Smash as a casual party game, there's no denying the extreme hype of a Smash Ball. Who's gonna get it, people? Mega Man! Mega Man! The Super Fighting Robot! Oh, wait! Oh, oh, he got one! He got one! Who, super Fighting Robot! Mega Man! So then we get Super Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS, and now everyone is definitely thinking they can't possibly think of another way to change up the gameplay. And for the most part, you'd be right. They did introduce ledge trumping and a few other mechanics, but when it comes to actually adding in another input that you can do to perform a brand new attack like side specials, up and down throws, and final smashes, Smash 4 introduced visible meters for passive abilities. Passives are actually really common in MOBA games like League of Legends, but I always thought it would be extremely interesting to see it implemented in a fighting game like Super Smash Bros. So what are the passive abilities in Smash 4? Well, there are things like Wario's Waft, which charges over time, or Lucario's Aura Effect, and I know both of these things made their debut in Brawl and are visible if you know what to look for, but what I thought was really cool was how Little Mac and Cloud received meters by their character portraits to clearly indicate the status of their passive ability. Once the meter is fully charged up, inputs that would normally do certain moves now perform different attacks that can't be performed without the passive ability fully charged up. And in that regard, they're completely different from something like Lucario's aura. As soon as I saw Little Mac and Cloud's meters, I knew Sakurai saw the potential of passive abilities and would fully realize this mechanic in its peak form in the next Smash game. Lo and behold, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is revealed to the world, the culmination of every Smash game before it, the perfect predecessor, the Smash game to end all Smash games, the one Smash game to rule them all. It's been 19 years leading up to this point, the final, most necessary, most significant addition to the Super Smash Bros. Toolkit was revealed to be... Shield plus B, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know why I never thought of it before. Seriously. Shield and A just does a grab and it's been like that forever. But how come I never considered the possibility of having something for Shield and B? So today we're going to have some fun and theorycraft 5 possible Shield plus B moves in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. If I lost you somewhere during my super long-winded try-hard funny intro, the Inkling is the only character in Smash Ultimate that has a Shield plus B move. Shield plus B will refill the Inkling's ink tank, and the Inkling basically needs to have ink available or else they become really weak. The whole ink mechanic is a passive ability similar to Cloud's Limit, Max KO Punch, Lucario's Aura, Wario's Waft, etc etc. However, you, as the Inkling player, get to manually control when your passive ability meter fills up, since your passive ability is very significant to the overall strength of your character. Now wait, wait a sec, I know what some of you are thinking, 
Well, you can manually charge your limit with down special when you're cloud. Just wait, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to cloud in a bit. I've got some ideas for him. Just hold your horses. But first, Mario. Once upon a time, Mario's down special was the Mario Tornado. A sweet multi-hit move that you can also use for a little boost when recovering. In Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the Mario Tornado was moved to his down air and his down special became the Flood. It was a really cool and unique change, but a lot of people were also pretty disappointed at how bad the Mario Tornado had become. So I was thinking, what if Mario's down special could be Flood and the good old Tornado from the Melee days? What if you could press Shield and B to charge up Mario's Flood, and whenever it's not fully charged, down special will be the Mario Tornado? And when you do have the Flood fully charged, Mario's down special could just release all of the water. Or, since a lot of Mario players like to use Flood without charging it all the way, what if it had three different charge tiers? Say for example, each Flood tier requires one second of charge time. You could hold Shield and B for one second, charge to the first tier which would be indicated by a flash or by some sort of meter on Mario's character portrait, and now, Mario's Down Special will release a tier 1 squirt of water. Whenever you don't have Flood charged up at all, Mario's Down Special could be his old school tornado move. Another character I thought would be a good candidate is Bowser. He's been breathing fire with his neutral special ever since his Melee debut in 2001. And if I'm being honest, it's always been a pretty garbage move. Yeah, you can rack up some damage with it and pull some shenanigans at the ledge, but overall it's just meh. However, in multiple Mario games, Bowser is seen spitting fireballs. What if Bowser could charge up a fireball using shield plus B and then spit it out by pressing neutral special once it's fully charged up? Or it could be a three tier charge thing like the Mario example and the fireball could get bigger with each tier. If you haven't charged it up to at least a tier one, then neutral special would just be the normal fire breath that we're used to. But now it's time to talk about Cloud. I know I'm acting like the Inkling getting a Shield plus B move to refill their ink is something completely brand new when Cloud's down B is clearly a limit charge. The difference is, Cloud's limit isn't really a passive ability. Same goes for Little Max KO Punch. You can actually just ignore your charge meter and play an entire match with little to no disadvantage as Cloud or Little Mac, but playing as the Inkling is a completely different story. If your ink meter runs out, your attacks are going to do less damage and some of them will literally have no hitbox at all. You could be doing your jab combo with no ink and because your gun is just shooting blanks, your opponent can just walk right into your splatter shot and smack you in the face. But back to the topic. What if Cloud could charge his limit by using shield plus B, freeing up his down special for a completely brand new move? Now I never really played any of the Final Fantasy games so I had to ask a couple of my friends and they all gave me multiple ideas but there was one thing specifically that all of them mentioned, Meteor Rain. It's the only limit break move that Cloud doesn't have in Smash Bros, but it's pretty overpowered so I'm not too sure how it would work. Other ideas were to introduce some of the spells that you can cast in Final Fantasy, or maybe just a generic counter move like a lot of the other sword characters have. One of my friends mentioned you could learn certain enemy skills if you got hit by them, so perhaps Cloud could have a down special that steals the damage and knockback of physical attacks, and then you could use down special again later on to unleash the energy that you countered. Kind of similar to how Villager's pocket works with projectiles, but Clouds would only work with physical attacks. But like I said earlier, I'm not too too familiar with the Final Fantasy games, so if you are, drop a comment down below and let me know some of your ideas for a new Cloud down special move. Another character that instantly came to mind when I started thinking about Shield plus B moves is Pokemon Trainer. This 3-in-1 mashup of a character uses down special to switch between Pokemon. So that means that Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard all don't have down special attacks. So the idea is, what if you could switch Pokemon using Shield plus B, which would open up three different down specials for three different moves? For Charizard, I would definitely want Rock Smash or his Heat Wave side special from Project M. Squirtle could also get something like Bubble from PM, or maybe a Ground Pound that shoots a wave of water out. Kind of like the projectile part of Kirby's Up special, but with water. And of course, Ivysaur would have to get his Solar Beam from Project M. I know I'm bringing up Project M way too many times, but please Nintendo, what's the point of killing the fan game if you're not going to have something planned that's very similar? Hmm? Give Ivysaur Solar Beam, please. 
Moving away from those ideas though, maybe Ivysaur could have some sort of spore move or leech seed. Maybe a poison powder that does damage over time, or leech seed that heals Ivysaur a little. Maybe a stun spore that momentarily slows enemies. But something I feel like I need to address before I get a bunch of angry comments is giving characters like Cloud and Pokemon Trainer an extra move is pretty unfair. Cloud is already really strong as it is. He doesn't need any more tools. I get it. And giving a down special to Pokemon Trainer would mean giving a 3 in 1 character 3 more tools to work with. It's pretty unbalanced. I get it. I just think speculating and fantasizing about this stuff is a lot of fun. So make sure to leave a comment below with your own ideas. And finally, the last character on my list that could possibly get a new Shield Plus B move. The amazing, the unique, the top tier, Olimar. Olimar is one of those characters like Lucario and Wario that had super OG passive abilities before passive abilities got really cool meters. When Olimar pulls out a new Pikmin, it starts out with a leaf on its head. Over time, the leaf turns into a bud and then the bud will blossom into a flower. Unlike Lucario and Wario, however, this little passive ability that Olimar has is actually completely useless and just for show. In the Pikmin games, Pikmin that have flowers on their heads are faster and stronger. But as far as I remember, it's just a visual thing in the Smash games with no added benefits. Make sure to let me know in the comments if I'm mistaken. But Smash Ultimate is the Smash game that can change all of that. Usually it takes about 20 seconds for a Pikmin to fully bloom into a flower. But what if you could manually speed up the Pikmin growth process by holding shield plus B? And what if fully blossomed Pikmin were actually stronger and faster than brand new leaf Pikmin? This would add an entirely new dynamic to Pikmin management. Usually throughout a match you're just tossing Pikmin around like they don't even matter because to, to be fair they really don't since you can just pull more out of the ground in a set order. However, what if you got your opponent to a high percent? held on to a big fat purple Pikmin, raised it into a beautiful flower, and then at the perfect time, smacked your opponent in the face with it to get the kill. If you could manually grow your Pikmin to make them faster and stronger, I think it would add a lot of depth to the Olimar game plan and make the character a lot more interesting, and give him a little buff without having to give him more Pikmin. Remember back in Brawl when he had 6? Yeah, I totally predicted they were going to nerf it to 3 by the way. But anyways, those are just a few crazy ideas I've been daydreaming up about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I really hope we get dojo updates like the good old days. Don't forget to let me know your ideas for Shield Plus B moves in the comments below, click a video on screen to watch more of my stuff, and of course, like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. Thanks for watching all the way until the end, and as always, happy smashing.